This is Andrew, and welcome back to Madman Review. In this episode and today, we are going to talk about the 3030, which used to be a big name back in the day, but has lost all the glory. Suppose that you are hunting big game critters, and you got within 100 yards. That distance, you can load a 150 grain 308 Winchester, and the bullet will penetrate about 19 inches and deform, expanding the frontal diameter to 0.55 inches. If you use a heavier 180 grain bullet from a 30 odd 6, you get 22 inches of penetration and about 0.6 inches of expansion. But there's another option. You have your standard 150 grain hunting bullet and will penetrate at least 23 inches and expand as much, if not more, than two 30 calibers I've just described. Better yet, you can achieve that level of performance while producing just 13 foot pounds of recoil if you fire it from a 7 pound rifle. For comparison, that is 6 foot-pounds less than the 30 8 and 11 foot-pounds less than the 30 6 Now, you might be thinking, well, geez, why hasn't anyone told me about this? What is this cartridge? For the second question, it's the 3030 Winchester. For the first question, well, it's complicated. You might be thinking, how can the outdated 3030 outperform the most powerful and popular big game cartridges today? Well, I'll tell you exactly why the 3030 is everything that any good hunter needs. Penetration over velocity. When it comes to killing power, which do you think is more important? Penetration or velocity? Conventional bullets on the 308 and the 30 6 have high velocities, which cause more bullet erosion, reducing weight, and consequently affecting the penetration. One may argue that the higher velocity can cause more tissue damage, and they would be right, that is, assuming that there's enough penetration. Bullets from all of these three cartridges achieve enough penetration, although the ones from the 308 and 30 6 can put down an animal faster. That should be the selling point, right? Eh, not really. Sure, they put down an animal faster, but they don't make the critter any more dead. It's either dead or not. So, it is not really quantifiable. What is important here is penetration. Additional bullet weight does not contribute to killing power. A quick, clean kill is achieved with a combination of proper bullet placement and enough penetration. That is everything you need to know about a bullet's killing power. The first factor you can achieve with practice the second factor, the 3030 does best. If you need proof of this concept in action, just like at the big game animals in North America. Before we got machine guns and nukes, the natives used to hunt bison with a bow and a couple of arrows. What is their velocity? About 300 feet per second, so clearly it's not the speed that kills. It's the penetration. You might argue again that arrows and broadheads put animals down differently than bullets, but they do not. Arrows do put animals down by taking out a vital region of the central nervous system or causing enough bleeding to starve the brain of oxygen. That's basically how bullets do the job as well. The 3030 is also proven. There's over a century of proof where hunters will go out in the field carrying 3030 ammo and taking down big game animals such as moose and lions. With this much power behind the bullets, why is it that people think that the 3030 is for beginners? You can say that this is because nothing about it has changed since its introduction. In fact, most modern ammo loaded with bonded bullets like Federal's hammer down and fusion loads or solid copper bullets from Hornaday and Barnes, the 3030 is the best it has ever been. It will nail everything a hunter wants nailed down out to about 175 yards. And this is perhaps why the 3030 isn't so popular among modern hunters anymore. High velocity cartridges also give additional ranges. More range means more opportunities. In addition to this, it is easier to learn how to put your crosshair over the target and pull the trigger. That is target practice. Hunting is more than that. Suffice to say, the skill level of an average hunter nowadays is lower than it has ever been before. That is not to say that's entirely a bad thing. If a hobby is easy to get into, then you would expect more people to join in, which is never a bad thing. All I'm saying is that hunting used to take a lot of skill a century ago, and it keeps getting easier as time goes on. But this brings me to the final argument. Hunting is its own sport. As mentioned before, long-range shooting and hunting are not and should not be the same sport. Shooting is fun and all but there's a certain level of complexity when it comes to hunting. You need to read the signs, find the animal, get within range, and then shoot it. When you take away all the stalking work you need to do, hunting becomes long-range shooting. And it's just not as fun. You're better off sitting at a range shooting paper targets. Moreover, just because you can hit targets at extreme distances does not make you a good hunter. It helps, mind you, but it will not be as useful as you think. Try it out. It really works well for both the shooter and the shot. This argument has little to do with the 3030, but I want to highlight the beautiful art of hunting. Spend some time out there hunting game all over the globe using various guns and cartridges. It will take a while, but the experience you get is invaluable. There are no wonder rifles, cartridges, or bullets. You use the right tool for the right job, and you wouldn't shoot anything unless you are 100% sure you can hit it. 
A hard kicking rifle does not help with that. If you learn how to hunt well, then you will realize that the 3030 is an amazing cartridge. And there you have it, folks. If you find this video helpful, consider giving us a like and subscribe to our channel. Hit that bell icon to be notified when a new episode comes out. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.